What's up guys, welcome back to Diving Garage. And today I'm gonna to show you how I built this roots blower on a budget. Let's dive in. All right, so the best way to show you all of this and how it works is to tear it down and build it together step by step. But to do a quick overview, uh, we got a 48 pulley, we got a 65 pulley, and the two of those should give me about five to seven pounds of boost. And we're working with a 671 large bore. There's two kinds, there's a large bore and a small bore. The large bore is the one you want. And this here, oh man, this is what I'm really the most excited about. Of course, the blower itself, but running the Holly 2x4 setup, man, it's, that's going to change the game completely. I'm pretty excited for this setup. You know, not just the boost, of course, but having the EFI, that's going to completely change the game for Hank. Um, he's having carburetor issue after carburetor issue. And I let me tell you right now, I like carburetors. I'm a carburetor guy, but on this build right here, I wanted the computer to be able to manage uh, all the fueling and the timing and all that. And also, I don't have it out right now, but back here I'm going to be running a Holly HyperSpark. So we're going full on Holly on this build and it's going to be sick. All right, so I'm going to get this thing torn down and I'll bring you back. Okay, all right, we're back. Man, that took a long time and it is hot in here. It's like 100 degrees outside and I'm in here with the door closed and I got no AC or nothing. So I started sweating hard, had to change shirts. Um, so we switched over and this is the 350 I tore down in a video a couple videos ago and uh, this this block is trash it's completely garbage crank is garbage everything about it is garbage so I switched the blocks over so I got the 283 over there uh, on the other stand because I'm going to take the heads that were on here put them on the 283 and build that different story that's a different video anyway so we got this thing ready to set up uh, and start building your building the blower so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start right here at the uh, damper. All right, this is the first piece we're gonna start out with, and this is gonna be your uh, pulley hub with two accessory grooves. So at this point, you already have to make a decision. You can run a uh, pulley hub, which takes the place of the damper, or you can run the dampener plus this. Uh, it's kind of your choice. I'm gonna go with the dampener plus the two rib accessory because uh, I'm gonna run this mostly on the street, so I want to make sure I'm running a dampener. But uh, again, step one, we're already encountering controversy. That's gonna be the, <laughs> you got choices to make along the whole way here. But if you're running just the hub, let me know down in the comments below. Do you like it, having problems? And does the belt really take out all the harmonics? Anyway, so the first thing I'm gonna do is oh, throw that on the ground. It comes with this little spacer that goes up back there and that bolts up to the dampener. So I'm gonna get that on. All right, so next thing I'm gonna be putting on is the water pump. Uh, I'm gonna be using a short water pump. That just means that the nose section is a little bit shorter, if you can tell. The nose section is a little bit shorter than the long nose. Um, they flow pretty good, but the biggest thing you wanna um, make sure you do is make sure you get the dual pattern hub here. So that way you can run uh, different kinds of pulleys. Uh, I got one before, and I got one just off of like a 77 vet with a short pump and it, it didn't have the right pattern, so I had to get this one. All right, now I just got that on. A um, couple of things to note. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you plug this hole. That's really for a big block. It's got a little crossover that goes there. And then you're gonna need a, uh, I think it's a one half NPT to connect to your heater core if you're running that. And then now we're gonna go ahead and do the two pulleys. We're gonna do the lower 48 tooth pulley and then the water pump dry pulley. These lower pulley bolts that connect the uh, pulley to the hub here, these are coarse thread, but we find on the top pulley that they're fine thread. All right, next we're gonna move to the intake. This is obviously a small block Chevy to 671 or 871 intake. And yes, it's from the evil Speedmaster. Well, guys, let me tell you, if you try to look for these online, like Facebook or whatever, number one, you're going to get scammed out of your mind. They have these all over the place, whatever brand, I don't care what brand you want. Uh, you like a YN, you want um, anything else, but people are trying to scam you on all blower parts. I have no clue why, I, I guess because they're desirable, but uh, if you're going to start buying this stuff on Facebook, watch out. A lot of scams out there. I almost... Got, got, I don't know, three times 
but in the end, they, all they want you to do is PayPal you them money, and then they'll ship you the part, right? No. Anyway, so yeah, I got this one on the Speedmaster before Summit dumped them, and a little side note on Speedmaster, I saw what happened when uh, they robbed that one guy's uh, part, and then they put him, put his name on it and shipped it out. That was, that was put the nail in the coffin for them. But a lot of this other stuff is Speedmaster, guys, because you know what? It's just billeted aluminum. So does it really matter? All right, intake is on there. Uh, I just did a 15 degree swivel water neck, and this part is pretty straightforward. Uh, there's only one thing on the back I'll come and show you. Come and show you here is your uh, pop-off valve, blow-off valve, whatever you want to call it. Um, in the case that you get a backfire, it, this, these springs will allow this plate to come back and then all that excess gas and pressure will come out of here. So a lot of people, what you can do too is get this milled out to do a burst plate and uh, it's just like a little square and it'll just burst when you get that. But to me, if that blows, you have some other major, major problems. But anyway, this is the pretty simple one it comes with and these uh, you'll see all kind of all around. And uh, obviously the distributor goes here and we do have the Holly HyperSpark. And um, when, once we go to do the real install, I'll put that in there. And on the back of here, this is gonna be your boost reference. Uh, I'm gonna run a, I think it's like an eighth MPT to a four AN, and then I'm gonna run into a vacuum or boost block so I can reference that for um, the uh, sniper and also I'm gonna have a gauge. Um, so that's where you're gonna pull your uh, boost reference. One more note on the Speedmaster, it's either get scammed on Facebook or buy from China. So which would you rather do? I'd rather buy from China and actually get the part, unfortunately, but it's either this or nothing. It, I spent months looking just for this piece right here and couldn't find one. Not for a good price anyway. You might have find like a vintage uh, Y-end intake manifold for a small block Chevy to 671, 871, but they want like $1,200. Like, get out of here. This, I think, was four. So, you got to pick your battles. Uh, so normally there's a gasket that goes right here before you put the actual blow on. Uh, but in addition to the uh, burst plate or burst valve there, uh, also, one thing you want to do for safety is to run these aluminum, um, I think they're called pop-off studs or burst studs, but basically the point is when you do have a bad enough backfire, this thing will actually break. So that way um, you can save the blower because when that blower is spinning real fast and you get a backfire, it sort of stops and it'll just eat itself, right? So just something else you can do. I'm just going to do probably like these two and you're going to want to just run these all the way down like that. And then again, normally gasket, and we're gonna get the blower and come set it on here. Now, heads up, these suckers are heavy, <laughs> so be ready to maneuver this thing down. There we go. Woo! All right, are we building a blower yet or what? So now that's on there. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rest of these and I'm going to go ahead and throw them in all the holes. All right, we're moving right along pretty quick. It's starting to look like a blower build already, huh? So next thing I'm gonna do um, is gonna put on the snout. And the way you measure for the snout, let me show you actually. All right, you're gonna get yourself a um, straight edge. This is just a level and a tape measure. And all you're gonna do is once you got that bottom blower set, make sure it's nice and level on there. Let me switch sides here. Make sure it's nice and level on there. And you're gonna measure from this flush surface here to the edge of your level. So go like that and then measure that distance. And what you find is that there's a few kind of standard lengths of snouts. Yeah, there are some specialty ones out there you could do. Um, but I went ahead and went with a five inch. Even though you see a five and three quarters, we'll get there. So let's get the snout mounted on. Uh, the first piece is already there. There's a little coupler that attaches to the gears that are inside the blower and the snout mounts right in there. And normally there's a gasket that goes right here, but again, we're just all dry. This is all gonna come off again when it's getting installed. So. Uh, one more note on, this is a uh, standard or stock style front cover. You can see there's this triangle here, and this is where you'll add fluid when come the time comes. 
but you'll see too this has a flat section of it and that's because when you're mating these two you need that space because if this was fully round it would be some interference issues so that's something you make sure you want to make sure that you note whatever your style of front cover is because there are some uh, I guess I'll call them aftermarket ones that where this is not here or it's moved over to where you can run just a round one but if you have a stock style cover with the, this little triangle plate you have to run with the one with this flat section all right so now if you were to get your top pulley and just mount it on there and you take that level again and you measure it, you'll find you have a distance here and that's where these little spacers come in. They come in all kinds of widths. This is a 700,000 spacer. Um, it was pretty close. It's only 50 thousandths off of the three quarter gap. So it's pretty good. And now all you gotta do is got a little recess in there. Put that on there. Line these up. Line this up. A little bit of a dance. And then get your top pulley is on. So I'm gonna scoot you over and then get that, get that on there. Easiest way I found to do this is to get your pulley in there line up the holes, stick a bolt through, and then you wanna make sure you run a washer. Like I just dropped mine. So you got your pulley lined up, stick a bolt through there, and then just find a hole and line her up. And again, these bolts here are fine thread. And could you use regular hex heads? Yeah, for sure, you definitely could. But the theme kind of seemed to be to be using these Allen style ones or hex style, whatever you want to call them. So I just went with that. And remember too, when you're putting these in and uh, you're adding uh, width with that spacer, you have to add, add length to your bolts. So just another thing to account for, take some measurements. This is a lot of math, guys. Doing this build, a lot of math, a lot of measuring. That's why it took me so long. It's not even really getting the parts that's too hard. Minus that intake, of course. Um, but it's just a lot of math measuring and a lot of little fitment issues. It's a ton of that. All right, so you'll see that getting these tall valve covers on there, a little tricky. And I think what I might do is I might actually clearance the intake a little bit because I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a, a socket on the nut that hold because I'm running head studs or uh, valve cover studs on Hank right now that engine so that's gonna be tricky I might clearance this a bit there's some there's some meat on here to do that with but yeah it fits the tall valve covers do work it's just it's a little tricky so let me bring in here and talk about this top plate all right so in here you got another choice to make uh, this is obviously a dual uh, four barrel intake you can run a single and that's what I was gonna do but this decision is not an appearance decision. What you need to do here is go do some math and figure out how much flow that you're gonna need to run your setup. So my setup here, I think it was like 1100 CFM. So yeah, I could have got like a 1200 CFM single and ran that. Oh yeah, I gotta love that. So obviously I went with the duels. Uh, the snipers will grab them there in just a second. Um, but again, this is another choice you need to make on this type of uh, induction and type of fueling that you're going to do. On the back of here, there are two ports. I have another 1 8 MPT to 4 AN, and I got this one plugged. But these ones are going to always see vacuum. So I'm going to run the transmission uh, vacuum modulator to this port here with a 4 AN line. And if I need another vacuum only, it's going to be right here. If you think about it, when you got your um, carburetors or whatever you're running up top, they're uh, this is always seeing suction because the blowers are right here or the rotors are right here. And then once the rotors turn in this section here, down at this point, you always have boost. There's a lot of debate on that. And if you disagree, let me know in the comments because, hey, look, I'm always up to getting a little bit more knowledge. But to me, that's the way it makes sense. All right, my mistake. I forgot a piece. Uh, this is the belt idler. So what this does is this is how you add tension to your belt. And obviously idler is an idler and this style i went with the snout mount there's also a case mount that has some brackets here and a little slider here um, but i like this it's a little more simple uh, but just one thing you got to note is the width of your snout has to match this width here they make i think three different sizes of this 
So you just gotta measure that, make sure you have clearance here and there's a little gap so that way you can clamp it down. And then just put the pulley back on. All right, now as for your belt system, uh, the way to measure it is just get some string, uh, tape it here, loop it around, find like a kind of middle of the road position for your idler, tape it to the end, cut it, and just measure the string. Uh, that's pretty much the same process for a V-belt, and this is really just a bunch of V-belts. So um, I got, I think, 53. I think I got a 53. So I ended up going with a 55 a three inch belt. You gotta get the three inch. Don't do the two inch. You gotta get the three inch. Uh, why? Cause it's awesome. That's why. And now you just throw your belts on there. Make sure you catch the teeth on the top and the bottom. And then use your idler. And this is also how you're gonna control where the belt rides once the engine is turning. So you can use this idler with the little flanges to control and try to get this thing right in the middle. Boom, there you go. So that is it for the drive assembly. And then of course, we'll do V-belts to like the alternator and the uh, power steering pump, uh, but that's later once it's installed. Now let's get those sweet, sweet super snipers on. All right, got them installed. Got them just lightly bolted down. Again, no gaskets, this is just a mock-up. If you look at these, one of these units here has all the stuff on it, all the cables. That's the master unit. It goes in the back. And also, if you look down here, that is a reference that you're going to need to supply the uh, ECU. I want to say it goes onto the HyperSpark unit, just like a distributor advance. Uh, but that is actually your, uh, I want to say it's map pressure for manifold air pressure sensor. Uh, it's going to, the computer needs a reference from there in order to uh, adjust the fueling. And this is just a uh, 3 8 for your brake booster. This is your idle air control valve. Of course, you got your fuel crossover. Oh, and this is the linkage. Uh, there's a sweet uh, bar that connects these two. And here from the other side, you connect the two units with these wires here. Uh, I'm gonna do a whole overview on installing this, so don't, we're not really gonna get into it too much. Uh, but anyway, this is what it looks like. Um, and of course, you got your fueling here, fueling there run your fuel. I want to say, I've seen a lot of people do two fuel lines down to a regulator about here. I'm going to run them two fuel lines down to the back because that's where my regulator is at. And of course, how can you build a blower without the scoop? Oh yeah. Now this thing is just sort of a generic scoop and I plan to paint match it to match the sheen of the actual blower. Um, but on that note, if you have ideas about color matching this stuff like i don't know should i paint the intake black should i paint this thing black and just go all black and because remember the the engine it's going on is like that gm corporate blue aluminum heads i'll probably leave these alone let me know what you think anyway guys but that is that is it check it out we covered it all from the bottom to the top man this thing is freaking sick the only thing I'm missing on this top piece right now is the linkage that goes from here down to these arms and I'll get that later. It's on the way and we're done. One blower complete. Um, if you have any questions about any of this build, let me know in the comments below and guys it a couple weeks here. I have a couple things I need to figure out still and a couple things I need to use the truck for in its current state, but this thing is going in very soon, very soon. Uh, I'm going to have some other content with it later on. But guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and get out there and dive your next project. Catch you next time.